Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Bullock here, and this is Algebra 2, um, the beginning of Algebra 2. It's, it's basically an Algebra 1 review, so I'm going to go kind of fast. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, properties uh, for the real numbers A, B, and C. Um, I don't know why they make you memorize these. I, I could to punish teenagers, that's what I think, you guys. So uh, properties, we have the addition property and the multiplication property. Some of these are used a lot, you guys, and some aren't. Uh, for example, the closure property, I'll tell, I'll be honest with you, the closure property is not used a whole bunch, you guys. Um, it, it just says when you add any two real numbers, because it says they're real right here, it's going to give you another real number. Okay, same for multiplication. If you multiply any two real numbers, then it's going to be real. Okay, that's called the closure property. Oh, boy. Okay, the commutative property. Actually, this one's used a lot, you guys. Uh, commutative property. You know, when I drive to work, I commute to work, and then I commute back home. These guys are commuting around the addition sign. So A plus B is the same as B plus A. It's like, say this is me going to work, and then this is from work going back home. I'm commuting. And these are just, that's the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of multiplication works the same. A times B equals B times A. Can you see how A and B are commuting around the, the multiplication sign? So commutative property of multiplication. The associative property. The associative property just says, uh, you know, if I want to add numbers, I can choose which two numbers to add first, which two numbers to associate with first. Some of them are better to add together, you guys. So A plus B, when I add those first, and then add C, I'm going to get the same result as if I added B plus C first and then added A. So it's just reassociating or regrouping numbers with addition. Associative property of multiplication says the same thing. A times B first and then times C is the same as B times C first and then times A. Sometimes different numbers match up better. Uh, like for example, 25 times 4 equals 100. And if I multiply 100 by anything, it just adds a couple of zeros. So I can, I can, you know, say this is 25 over here and this was 4 over here. I would multiply these two numbers first and then that would give me 100 times whatever that is. So just add two zeros to that. Okay, so associative property works great. Okay, the identity property is not used very much, you guys. Any number plus zero equals itself. And same for multiplication. When you multiply by uh, one, any number times one also equals itself, you guys. It's not used a lot. I mean, it is, but you're not asked to identify it. Commutative and associative property, you'll see that probably on a test coming up. Inverse property, any number plus its opposite is equal to zero. Okay, and then uh, any number times its reciprocal equals one. Okay, as long as that uh, number is not zero. Uh, zero does not have a reciprocal, you guys. Okay, and that's all that means, you guys. Um, so any number times its reciprocal equals 1. Okay, note A and, uh, and opposite A are opposites each other, and then um, A and 1 over A are called reciprocals of each other. And then lastly, this one's used a lot, you guys, the distributive property. A times the quantity B plus C. You guys have done this. Remember this from algebra? A times B plus this sign right here, A times C. Okay, so they'll ask you probably some um, um, properties to tell you what property just happened, and there you go. Okay, so evaluate. Okay, so let's evaluate some of these. Remember, this is algebra one. These two look real similar, you guys, except can you see this one has the negative, it's being included with the squared over here. The negative is not being included. So, real common error, and I would probably make it here now and then, this error, you guys. This negative is not being squared, so toss that negative aside for a second and square the 16. And then it's negative that, whereas over here, this is negative 16 times negative 16. Okay, so this one's going to get me a negative 256. This one's going to get me a positive 256. Can you see why? This negative wasn't being squared, so it's going to hang out to be negative no matter what. Uh, okay, and this negative is being squared, and the negative that's being squared is always positive. Okay, on this one, you guys just plug in negative 4 right there and right there. Okay, so I get negative 3 times, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 3 times negative 4 squared, which is positive 16. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Okay, and then I multiplied 3 times 16 is 48. 48 minus 20 is 28. And then 28 minus that 12 right there is 16. Okay, remember doing that? All right, simplify. Okay, this is, yes, it's this easy, you guys. I'm kind of embarrassed to give it to you, although it's just out of our, it's the first sections of Algebra 2, which is an Algebra 1 review. Okay, combine like terms. 13x plus 3x is 16x. 16x minus 7x is 9x, okay? And that 5 doesn't have an x, so it's just 9x minus 5. 
Okay, on number two, the only thing you can combine is this 8r cubed minus 9r cubed to get me a negative 1r cubed. There's nothing else with the rest of them, so that's the answer right there. Okay, what else do I have? Okay, let's solve some of these, you guys. Okay, um, this is algebra one. Actually, this is a pre-algebra problem. Subtract nine from both sides and divide by four. Get x equals three. Okay, this one here, you're going to add 41 to both sides. And then uh, negative 13 plus 41 is 28. Okay, watch the negatives, you guys. I still have some algebra two kids, that, including me. Sometimes I'll, I'll trip up on that, you guys. Uh, anyways, uh, it equals a positive 28 and 7 goes into 28 four times. Okay, this one here, I would go ahead and um, add the 7 to both sides and get 2 thirds x equals 12. And then now what I would do on this one, you guys, is multiply by the inverse, the reciprocal of both uh, of 2 thirds. Okay, so which is 3 halves. So I'll multiply both sides by 3 halves. Okay, and then uh, 2 goes into 6 3 times. Oops, I did. I put that up there. And then uh, I'm left with 6 times 3 or 18. Okay, over here everything cancels, so x equals 18. Okay, on this one, you guys, um, 4 goes into 4, but 4 doesn't go into 2 nice and evenly. It gives me a fraction. Yeah, it's equal to a half, but then I have 5 tagged with it. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of this 4 and multiply both sides by 4. Okay, just kind of thinking ahead. And what happens is, is uh, I'm left with uh, 5 quantity 4x plus 2 equals 12. And then you guys know what to do after this. Distribute that 5 through, okay, and then subtract 10. All right, and you get uh, 2, 20x equals 2, so x is 2 over 20, which reduces to 1 over 10. Okay, okay on this one here, I'm going to uh, subtract 8y from 13y, and then at the same time, I'll subtract 9 from 16 right there. I'll do that all at once. I color-coded them, you guys. So uh, I did the minus 8y's in blues, and then I did the minus 9's in reds right there. And then um, uh, you'll see that the 8y's cancel over here. The 9's cancel. And it's negative 16 minus 9 is negative 25. 13y minus 8y is 5y. And 5 goes into negative 25, negative 5 times. Okay. All right. This one here, looking at this, you guys, a half is like dividing by 2. And I can divide both those by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the half through. So a half of 14x is 7x. And a half of 2 is 1. And then distribute the 3 through on that side right there. I can do that. So there you go. And then uh, just like on number 5, I'm going to go ahead and, and add 9x and subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, 7x plus 9x is 16x. And then 6 minus 1 is 5. Divide by uh, 16 on both sides and you get uh, uh, 5 sixteenths. Okay, depending on what kind of mood I'm in, you guys. Uh, so this is the first three sections in our algebra book, algebra 2 book. So... I would have you work uh, the first three sections in either your workbook or the textbook, uh, one to the end, every other odd. Okay, and it's going to take you some time, but you should have a lot of class time because this lesson was pretty fast, you guys. Okay, so um, uh, go ahead and take care of that, and we'll, we'll work on the next uh, couple of lessons uh, soon.